Welcome to 10 Minutes with Bambai. My name is Bambai and today I'm sitting with the prominent um, AC. I'm, I'm just going to cut the iron while it's hot. Let's start with your name. What's your name? AZ Lumumba, William. What's your name? It depends where you know me from. So at home they, they like to call me AC. My grandparents like to call me Ndundu. Uh, my friends like to call me Wizo, you know. <laughs> Lumumba is what I like to call myself. It's the name I put forward because it's the name I resonate with the most, but it's also the name that I feel speaks the most to what I am about. As I sit here and I'm asking this question, there's, there's many other people who just want to know who Lumumba is mm -hmm. because there's so much that we've seen in a very short space of time, but I think I would like to know who Lumumba is. Lumumba is a politician whose singular passion is to help people and I want to help them by creating a political economic and social space where each of us can chase after our versions of a good life whatever that version of a good life is now to some their version of a good life is being able to send your mother to hospital when she's sick to some is being able to send your kids to school to some is being able to pursue your own career but whatever your version of a good life is I want to help create a space that allows you to do that because that's what I always wished somebody did for me. I run a children's home, you know, that looks after 134 children who I send to school personally uh, and another eight to seven who I'm supported by friends and colleagues to help to send to school. Uh, and these are children who are from Epworth who I know that unless we extend that helping hand, they're never going to have a chance to go through this education system we like to brag so much about. But now I create jobs in the same place. I grew up in, I run a company, Meatbox, which employs over 300 people. You know, these are the same people who, when I grew up with, wouldn't even have a chance to get employed. 80% of the people I employ are people who are deemed unemployable. They either have terrible police records or they either have uh, terrible education qualifications. Or in fact, they've got no education qualifications or they just had a bad start in life or they've fallen upon hard times in life. You know, they went through a marriage, a marriage didn't work out, the husband left the wife and children and now she's got nothing except those kids. Those are the people I'm after. Those are the people I'm helping every day. My wallet alone is not enough. I can't do it and I can and I can get it done. I need the instruments and apparatus that politics brings with it, the policy guidance that policy brings with it, to be able to actualize that to provide more practical help for a larger group of people. And that's what I'm after now, to use politics to do more. I don't understand then how you found yourself in, in ZANU-PF. I am in love with President Robert Mugabe, the young President Robert Mugabe, the young President Robert Mugabe who promised that this country would transition from a racist country to a country where it was a rainbow nation. Black, white could live cohesively together. I'm in love with the young Robert Mugabe who sold us the dream of a post colonial era into a country where you and me had the same shot at life that any other white kid might have had in this country. That Robert Mugabe, I'm in love with. I joined Zeno PF because I believed in that story. I bought that vision and that idea. There is nothing wrong with the ideology of Zano PF. People have this notion that once you're out, you're supposed to hate the ideology. I totally comprehend the ideology of Zano PF. I totally do not agree with what has happened to that promise. It's like a man who has made a promise to his wife. Zano PF made a promise to me when I joined. And that promise was we were going to create jobs. The promise was we were going to empower. The promise was we were going to indigenize. I endorsed the promise, I voted for the promise, I campaigned for the promise, only to then realize the promise wasn't kept. So it's because I wanted to help that I joined Zeno PF. It's because I wanted to help, it's because a lot of people want to help, that's why they are in Zeno PF. Um, but the promise wasn't being kept, and for me, I had to leave because the rules of the game had changed, and I realized it's like staying in a bad relationship. Do I stay or do I go? And then you, at some point, Kwese Kufa, you know, if you stay in, you're dying. If you run, you're dying. Uh, I decided to run. How then did you find yourself insulting the president that you, that you loved so much, the young president, the young Robert Mugabe? We found, you found yourself saying the word that none of us can even say. I said fuck you to the president. I didn't insult him. 
People think I insult. No, I didn't insult the president. If anything, the president insults this country every day. The president insults your intelligence and mine. The president insults the war veterans. The president insults the civil servants when they're not paid on time, but yet you want them at work every day at the time they're supposed to be at work to provide the service to this country. This president insults the midwives who give, who assist our women to deliver children and give birth into this country every day. The president insults other countries. Me insult the president? I never insulted the president. I expressed myself to the president. And I was trying to get his attention to let him know that, listen, Robert, I mean, look here. You know, we, we have all defended you tirelessly. I mean, when you're a Zimbabwean and you go anywhere in the world, the first thing you have got to do when you land is defend Robert Mugabe. I mean, how do I defend a literacy rate that's going down? How do I defend hospitals that don't have uh, penicillin, but yet we can afford to buy brand new Mercedes-Benz E-Class 300 series for our judges and our MPs and our ministers. I couldn't defend him anymore. So I expressed myself in that way because that's how I felt. And I'm tired of being politically correct. I don't want to be politically correct. I want to be politically incorrect because right now, look around you. We all fucked. <laughs> We're all in trouble. And meanwhile, you want to tell me to be politically correct when we are all in trouble? You're running, a t you're running a TV program. You know, you want to start a TV show. You can't even put it on your own national TV, your country's national TV. Being a 28-year-old, obviously, it means that us, the younger generation, would love to listen to you. But how then do they look up to you when there's use of such words? As opposed to looking up to what? Tell me what they're supposed to look up to. MDC? Tell me what they're supposed to look up to. Zano PF? They're supposed to look up to you. But you know what? Everyone wants to talk about me saying that last part of my press statement. You know what I also spoke about? I spoke about the young women who are failing to make it to grade 7 simply because their parents are failing to pay their school fees. What do we do with them when they fall, into the, when they fall away from the system? What separates them from becoming a nurse or becoming a prostitute? I also spoke about what do we do about our young entrepreneurs, the young men and women who we have, young boys and girls who are dreaming big dreams for this country but they can't apply for a tender process because government has put up restrictions that are impossible to penetrate how do we break down those barriers that's what they're supposed to, to look at we have got to move away from this culture that says what is bad about what you are trying to do so I can criticize it I want those same young people not to look up to me because I'm not their daddy I want them to look up to themselves to realize that the only way you get this country working is not by looking up to Lumumba but it's by realizing that you've got the skills that are requisite in order to get this engine functioning again this should never be about Lumumba. Politics becomes a very big problem when you make it about personalities. I don't want people to talk about me. That's why I'm not running for political office. Because I don't want politics to become about who is in charge. Politics must be about what do you want to do when you get into office. Forget Lumumba, man. Let me live my life. Just, just, just on the political side of the things there, you, you're not running for any political office, but you've started your own, your own political party. Leave us. It's, it's a misconception, you know, and, and I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's an inaccuracy. I didn't start Viva Zimbabwe, by the way. I am part of the founders of Zimba, Viva Zimbabwe. I used to lead the National Youth Council, which is the coming together of youth associations in this country. Now, that includes youth associations who are religious, youth associations who are in the, the, the development sector, who are in the civil society, and who are in the arts, arts, arts and culture, uh, young entrepreneurs. And young people have a lot of frustrations, but these frustrations have to be channeled towards a political action, a political front. Viva Zimbabwe is the political front for the energy young people already have. So I came in and agreed to lead this because I happen to be the one who is political or politically astute or politically tried or politically seasoned or politically able. So I took this task in, at, on, on hand in order to deliver that political program. But this is not about me, and I'm not running for political office because I don't want to. You know, but I realize that there are people who are better fit for political office who don't know how to run for political office. I know how to win elections. They might not know how to win elections. So I will use my skills and my talents 
to facilitate for them to be able to get into office because there's a, too much talent that is too unused or too untapped into in this country that at some point we need to figure out how to open the playing circle. What happens to, to, to then joining uh, an existing party? None of those political parties, if you ask me, have any message for young people. I don't know what Shangri's message for young people is. I don't know if you do. I don't know what Mujuru's message for young people is. I don't know if you do. In fact, I don't even think they're listening to ideas or they care about them because they never ask for them. They, they, they have rallies to talk at us, not for us to talk back. They don't have town hall meetings. They don't have discussion forums. So at which point do we become relevant in that political sphere? I don't know a political party that is focused on the agenda of young people. So if we don't save ourselves, nobody is coming to save us. So you don't even have to like me, but that's the reality. If young people don't step up to the plate, we will remain political condoms. Where what the political parties do is they take us, exert us for pleasure. When they are done, they throw us out the window and they say, thanks, it's been great. Now we'll continue without you. So talking about the fact that you're saying that we should do something as young people. Um, there's Patson Zamara, who's an, who's, who's an activist. There's Ivan Mawariwe, also running this flag. By all means, they're doing something. Protests are not the solution. Now, I know this is not popular, but it's the truth. You can protest all you want against bond notes. They're coming. No protest is going to stop those bond notes. And you know why they're coming? Because bon I'm certain because I'm a politician and it's being run by politicians. They will come because to the politicians, that's the last loot. That $200 million is the last loot. That's the retirement package. You're not going to stop Zano PF from stealing one more time, okay? Simply because you went and you protested. And how many of you protested anyway? Let's give it a figure. Is it 10 of you? Is it 100 of you? Is it 1,000 of you? Is it 10,000 of you? Zano PF can put out a million people for you on the street in a minute. Why? All you, all you, are, you are doing when you do a protest is you're letting them know who they need to attack. So you're coming out in the open, you're saying, hi, look at me, I'm the protester. They say, great, what's your name? Pastor E, we go, we, we'll get rid of you. What's your name? Patson, we get rid of you. What's your name? Uh, promise, we're going to get rid of you. So they knock you out. Now you take that same energy we used in the protests, and you take that energy to the voter registration uh, offices, and you're getting people to register to actually vote. The game is played in the ballot box. It's not played on the street. Anywhere in the world, there is not a single historical evidence that proves that protests actually deliver any change or any real change. Everywhere you've had protests and changes come in as a result of protests, disasters followed right after that. You look at Egypt, they removed Mubarak. The young people removed Mubarak by protesting. As soon as they left, guess what the military said? Let's go to elections. Guess who went in? Uh, Mohammed Morsi and he was worse than Mubarak then the military had to get rid of him you look at Libya same story you look at when Stalin left same story Hitler left same story Mao Zedong left same story Idi Amin same story I understand their frustration I just think their frustration is not equals a political solution it's equals a demonstration and I'm not a protester I'm a politician I'm in the business of getting votes do you realize that even Mawarire is he has just created a voice. That's all he's done. And the voice seems like it's been heard. By who? Who's heard the voice? By the government. You think the government cares about Ivan Mawarire? The government has shut him down. He's done. Ivan Mawarire is done. The government has essentially put an end to the momentum this flag had in this country by getting rid of Ivan. Now, do I agree with it? No. I don't agree with what they're doing to Ivan, but I can tell you, Ivan can't mobilize people in Harare anymore. He can't mobilize people, you know, those stairways. You can't have four of those stairways anymore. And I mean, to whose benefit anyway, even if they do work. And it's a Harare movement, hey? This is a Harare movement, this flag, with kids who've got food in their microwaves. When they're done taking pictures of selfies at Rotten Road, they go home to eat food in their microwave. It doesn't appeal to the kid in Bari. It doesn't appeal to a kid in, in Kuwazana. It doesn't appeal to an Warkumusha Nambuyodunasekuri. They don't even know what this flag is. You know why they don't know? Because that's not their language. It's you and me's language. Does it mean it's wrong what Ivan is doing? No, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It means it is not equals a political solution. It's equals a voice. But what good is a voice if it can't vote? You're speaking to me, the younger generation, and many others. 
What's the solution? Here's the solution. First of all, you must understand the arithmetic. And the arithmetic voted in the last election. And then there is 4.2 million virgin voters who are under the age of 45. That's you and me. Young people who've never been into the ballot box, but who simply haven't registered. If we are able to unlock that 4.1 million and we're able to send it to the ballot box, they are the decider. Young people will decide who can run, who will run this country if they decide to use their power. But I'm not, I think it's one thing them voting, it's another thing who they're voting for. We all now know who we are not going to vote for in the next election. We are all very clear who we are not voting for. The trouble is we don't know who we're going to vote for instead. The solution, there's 1,900 wards in this country. Every single ward must be contested by a young person. Why? Because we actually have to plan the future that we have to live in. We have a political sphere being planned by people who are not going to be in the future to be able to leave the consequences of what they are planning. So for that 1,900 seats, young people should contest for the wards. We have 210 constituencies in the country. Each constituency must be a young person who's ready to stand up and say, I am willing to serve my country and serve my fellow young people. That's the solution, to take the problems and make them ours and take the res total responsibility of these problems. Unless we do that, all we're doing is we're simply trusting somebody else to care about your life more than you care about it. I always say whenever you become passionate enough about anything, it becomes political. Whenever you become passionate enough about media, it becomes political. Passionate enough about education, it becomes political. Right now, we should be passionate enough about our futures and they are political. We are tired of hearing about the past. We're tired of hearing about the history. Now we want to hear about our future. And the only person who can offer a plan for our future is the young people because we have to live in it. Concerning ZANU-PF and you having all this, all this political um, experience and knowledge that you have, I'm sure it's because you, 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 are, you, are, you are a baby that comes from there. Don't you by, by all means feel scared? That maybe you could be a target. Obviously, I'm, re, I'm, I'm referring to the fact that you've been in court a few times. You've been held by the police a few times. I've been to jail a few times. But look, Precisely. am I not scared? We are all scared. You know, we are all scared. All of us, you're scared. You might not make it out of this country with this tape. You should be scared. You know, we are, we are all frightened even to aspire. We can't even aspire no more. Like, you can't tell your daughter she can dream to be president in her own country. It's like, it's a privilege that belongs to some kids, but not all kids. So, we're all scared. But it's, it's a question of what does the fear make me do? You know, I grew up around bullies and around people who always try to make us scared. I'm not scared of Zano PF. They can come at me. You see me in a fight with a bear, you pray for the bear. I'm ready to stand up toe to toe with a gorilla. So, we are scared. But I've got courage. Because courage is what's going to make us leap over that fear. And once you leap over it, you stop being scared. In fact, oh, Patson Zamara said to me that his, his brother had signed his own death certificate because he always used to say, I'm dead already. And that's how I feel like. I'm dead already. So I'm, when you tell yourself you're dead already, there's nothing else to be afraid of. I feel like I'm already dead. Because if I don't die this way, I'm going to die by waiting for Zano PF to fix my life, which they are not going to. So I'm dead already. I'm, I've got too much courage to be afraid. There's too much at stake. Please tell the young people how you would like them to see the current situation in our country. Your passions and your dreams are the single biggest factor that's going to decide what this country looks like. This country is desperate to quench you of everything you dream about, everything you imagine. But it comes at a price. If you want to see that country that we all imagine and we all know can come, you have to be responsible enough to at least register to vote. You have to be responsible enough at least to inquire what are the political parties talking about. But most importantly, you have to be responsible enough to understand that unless you vote, other people are going to vote for you. I want to see a country 
where you come with your ideas and we figure out how to fit them into the way we build this country. Why can't we have a 27-year-old managing the re-engagement process between us and the West? Why can't we have a 28-year-old managing the process of how we redesign the digitalization of our media industry? Why can't we have a 35-year-old who is now designing the new energy plan for this country on how we provide electricity to people in all the rural areas? Why can't we have a 36-year-old girl who comes in and she says, I want to be the minister responsible for women and child welfare to make sure that when we give birth to our children, they've got good hospitals to be born in. I believe those ideas exist. I believe those ideas are there. I can only bring one brick. But each one of us, we hold a brick. We were born with a brick, each one of us. And we have a choice to make as a generation. Do we use brick by brick to throw them at each other? Or do we come and we say, here's my brick. Here's your brick. Let's build a house that we can all live in. That's my message to young people. Don't use your brick to attack me or to attack another young piece, person. Bring your brick and brick by brick by brick, we can build a country that is fit for all who live in it. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was, a love, it was lovely chatting with you. Good show. Thank you.